Okay, so get this. Imagine a day, right, where the entire AI world just explodes with new stuff. Explodes, new yeah. New tools, tons of research papers, robots showing off. Oh, yeah. Well, that was basically October 31st, 2024. Wow. We're talking news articles, tech blogs, announcements, the whole thing. Yeah. And we're going to deep dive into it today. It's amazing just how much happened in one day. <laughs> it really is like AI went from, you know, this future thing to being everywhere, like all over the headlines. Totally. Like, I feel like everyone in tech just woke up and was like, it's AI day. Right. And where do you even start? I know. Well, one of the biggest things that happened was in the world of search. Oh, of course. Because... Google's not going to let anyone just take over search. Right? right. So they launched this new tool called Learn About. Learn About. Okay. It's yeah. like their answer to platforms like Perplexity. Interesting. So are they kind of positioning themselves as the learning platform? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. They're calling it part of their like learning mission. Okay. Not just search anymore. They want to change how we like learn and understand information online. Interesting. But of course, OpenAI is not just going to sit back and watch. Right. They launched their own ChatGPT search feature. Oh, wow. Basically challenging Google. Bing, everyone. So it's like a full-on search war Google. now. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And to make things even more interesting, OpenAI is now valued at $157 billion. Oh, it's... With a new credit line, too. Wow. So they're ready to spend big. Oh, yeah. They're not playing around. You know that valuation tells you everything you need to know, right? Right. The tech world is completely focused on AI search. Yeah. And OpenAI is ready to battle Google for it. For sure. This is going to be interesting to watch. Okay, but search is one thing. What about AI creating stuff? Ah, yes. Like in the world of AI image generators, things are getting crazy. Yeah, there's so much happening there. So this platform called Recraft V3, it's like the top dog right now. Really? It's beating out Midjourney and FLUX. And it's got yeah. these insane new features. Like what? Well, it's not just that it's better. It's the specific things it can do now. Okay. Like it can generate text in images that is actually readable. Wow. Any style, any length. That's a game changer. And the human anatomy creates way more realistic now. Mm. Plus, it gives you way more control over the final image. Sounds pretty impressive. It really is. Yeah. Like having an AI art director right there with you. That's a good way to put it. But hold on, because this next one, this is where things get really wild. Okay, I'm ready. So there's this company called Osmo. Osmo. And they created AI that can digitize smells. What? Yeah, like they took a plum, scanned it, and created a perfect digital copy of its scent. Hold on. They can digitize a smell. Yeah. How is that even possible? I know, right? <laughs> so they're using all this fancy science like gas chromatography and AI to create what they call a digital scent fingerprint. A scent fingerprint. Wow. Like imagine someday you could get a text message and suddenly you can smell fresh baked cookies. That's mind blowing. It is. Like that's straight out of Star Trek or something. Totally. Okay. But speaking of pushing boundaries. Yeah. GitHub just launched this platform called Spark. Spark, okay. And it lets anyone build mini apps, which right. they call Sparks. Okay. But here's the thing. You don't need to know any coding. Really? Nope. They're using AI tools like Claude and GPT, those powerful AI assistants we've talked about before. But Spark packages them in a way that anyone can use. So how does that work? Basically, you tell the AI what you want your app to do, yeah. and it builds it for you. No coding required. That's amazing. So anyone can be an app creator now. Pretty much. It's that's, really cool. That's a game changer for accessibility. That's for sure. Totally. But AI isn't just changing the digital world. It's getting physical too. Oh, right. You know Boston Dynamics' Alice Robot, the one that does backflips? Yeah, yeah. Well, now it can sort objects completely on its own. No way. They released this video of uh, moving engine covers between bins. No human help at all. What? And the thing is, it's not pre-programmed for that specific task. Oh, so it's learning as it goes. Exactly. It uses machine learning and all these sensors to understand its environment, like in real time. That's incredible. So how are they teaching it to do all this? Well, they actually partnered with the Toyota Research Institute. Oh, wow. So, you know, they've got even bigger plans for this technology. For sure. This is like next level robotics. Totally. It is pretty wild to see robots getting so skilled. Yeah. Makes you wonder what's next for us humans, you know? Right. Well, it's interesting because California colleges are having a hard time keeping up with the demand for AI professionals. Oh, yeah. I bet. And there's a good reason for that. 
the job market for AI is like really? exploding. Really? We're talking 12.9% growth over the next decade. Wow. And a lot of those jobs are paying over $200,000 a year. Seriously? AI skills are becoming essential, and not just for tech jobs, for almost every industry. It really does feel like the whole world is trying to learn how to speak robot now. Yeah, it kind of does. Yep. Maybe learning to speak robot is a good idea. Right. Especially if you're thinking about a career change. Definitely. Hmm. Yeah, it does feel like learning to speak robot is the new hot skill. <laughs> totally. But it's not just about job opportunities, right? right. It's about understanding how AI is going to affect, like, Everything we do. Exactly. And the big tech companies are definitely noticing this. Oh, yeah. Like, Meta is training their new AI model, Llama 4. Llama 4, okay. And get this, they're training it on what might be the biggest GPU cluster in the world. Wow, how big are we talking? Over 100,000 NVIDIA H100s. That's insane. All for one AI model. All working together to train this one massive AI. It's like building a digital brain on a scale we've never seen before. That's wild. What's Meta planning to do with all that AI power? Well, here's the wild part. They're letting anyone download Llama for free. Seriously, why would they do that? I think they're trying to, like, democratize AI development. Interesting. So anyone could potentially create the next big AI breakthrough. Exactly. It's like they're throwing open the doors to the AI revolution. That's a bold move. It is. Meanwhile, Microsoft is already seeing dollar signs from their AI investments. Oh, yeah. How so? They're saying AI revenue could hit $10 billion next quarter. $10 billion? That's incredible. And they're claiming that AI is growing faster than any other product in Microsoft's history. So it's not just hype. They're actually making serious money from it. Yeah. Azure, their cloud platform, is a big part of that. Right. Azure. And so is Microsoft 365 Copilot, their AI-powered productivity suite. So they're really integrating AI into all their products. Yeah, and it's paying off. And Meta's not shying away from spending either. They're planning to plump 38 to $40 billion into AI just next year. Wow, that's a lot of money. And get this, they're saying that number might even go higher in 2025. So even with the Reality Labs division losing money, they're still all in on AI. Yeah, Meta's clearly betting big on AI, thinking long term. It's a risky move, but it could pay off big time. Definitely. Yeah. But beyond all the money talk, what's exciting is how much easier and more natural it's becoming to use AI. Yeah, that's true. It's not just for tech experts anymore. Like Anthropic just released desktop apps for Claude. Claude. Yeah, their AI assistant. Yeah. So now you can access it right from your Mac or PC. Oh, that's convenient. It's a perfect example of how AI is moving beyond the tech labs and becoming part of our everyday tools. Definitely. And anyone can use it free or paid. So it's accessible to everyone. That's great. Totally. And it's not just our workflow that's changing. Google's adding generative AI, you know, the kind that can create stuff, to Google Maps, Earth, and even Waze. Wow. They're using their Gemini model to make navigation more interactive and conversational. So what does that look like in practice? Like, imagine you could ask your Maps app, find me a great dinner spot near my friends. Something with a lively atmosphere. Oh, okay. And it would factor in everyone's location, maybe even their dietary preferences. Wow. That's amazing. Right. It's like having a super smart friend helping you navigate. That's a good analogy. And speaking of smart friends, OpenAI is making ChatGPT even more chatty. Really? How so? By adding advanced voice mode to desktops. Oh, interesting. I know they already had that on mobile. Yeah. And it was a hit. So it makes sense to bring it to PCs and Macs, too. I guess people really are getting used to talking to their devices. It really does show how we're getting closer and closer to that sci-fi future where we just chat with our AI like it's another person. It's pretty wild when you think about it. You know, it's crazy to think that talking to computers used to be like a sci-fi thing. Oh, yeah. Now it's becoming like totally normal. It really shows how fast AI is changing everything. Totally. And how quickly it's like blending into our everyday lives. Yeah, for sure. And it's not just about convenience, right? It's opening up all these possibilities. Oh, for sure. For communication, for being creative, for solving all sorts of problems. Absolutely. Okay, so let's like take a step back for a sec and think about all the AI craziness that happened on October 31st. Yeah. I mean, we saw AI that can smell right. robots, it can store objects like prose, AI writing code. Like what can't AI do with this? <laughs> I know, and platforms that let anyone build apps, it's mind blowing. It really is. It makes you wonder what's coming next. For sure. So what do you think the biggest takeaway is from all this? 
I think the biggest thing is that AI isn't some far off future fantasy anymore. Right. It's here right now and it's changing everything. And it's moving so fast. Faster than ever. Exactly. So I guess the big question is, what does all this mean for like the average person? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? How will it change the way we work, the way we connect with people? even just the way we see the world. Imagine like applying for a job and you're interviewing by an AI instead of a person what? or planning a vacation and your AI assistant doesn't just book your flights and hotels. Right. It also like creates this whole personalized itinerary. That would be pretty cool. Right. Based on your interests, your budget, all of that. Sounds like something out of a movie. It really does. But it's probably closer than we think. Definitely. So everyone listening, Buckle up, because the AI revolution is just getting started. And we'll be here to keep you up to date on all the latest developments. Every step of the way. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the crazy world of AI. It's been a wild ride. Definitely a wild ride. Yeah. We'll see you next time.